Hello everyone. Um, we're going to discuss uh, the pelvic osteology. So that's a pelvic bone. It's made up of um, different parts. So you have the innominate bone that has three parts, the pubis, the ischium at the back, and the ilium. And these two innominate bones on the right and left are joined by the, the sacrum. All right. So we have the sacroiliac joint there. That's the ilium. The an anterior aspect of S1 vertebra is what we call the sacro promontory. That's the sacrum. Acetabulum, that's formed by the three uh, bones, the pubis anteriorly, the ischium posteriorly, and superiorly the ilium. That's the anterior superior iliac spine, anterior inferior iliac spine. That's the superior pubic ramus with the pubic tubercle and the pubic symphysis. Inferior pubic ramus, and that's the, the ischium. Okay. Posteriorly, that's the sacrum, the sacral hiatus, the sacral foramina, the sacral canal where the spinal cord passes, uh, parts of the uh, spinal nerves, that's the pubis, and that's the obturator foramen. So the pelvic girdle has uh, three bones, two innominate bones and the sacrum, and the girdle usually unites the trunk and the lower limb. The innominate bone has an ilium, ischium, and pubis that fuse together in the acetabulum. The sacrum has five fused vertebra and is usually triangular, while the cosex has four fused vertebra. The pelvis basically supports and protects pelvic viscera. It transmits body weight from the vertebra to the sacroiliac joints through the hemipelvis into the femur, and then its rotatory component of gait by swinging from side to side during walking serves as a site for muscle attachment and in females, it provides bony support for the birth canal. So this is how the weight is transmitted from the vertebra to the sacroiliac joints to the acetabulum and to the femur. So we have a pelvic outlet and a pelvic um, inlet. So pelvic inlet is that aspect here. Pelvic outlet is on the inferior part. So the pelvic outlet is formed by the pubic arc anteriorly, the istral tuberosities posteriorly, and then the sacrotuberous um, ligaments which are usually at that point, from the ischial tuberosity to the sacrum and the cossix posteriorly. So that forms the pelvic outlet. The greater pelvis is, the superior, uh, is superior to the pelvic inlet. It's usually bounded by the iliac ala posteriorly and the S1 vertebra, uh, iliac ala posterior laterally and the S1 vertebra posteriorly. And mainly the greater pelvis is occupied by abdominal viscera. So this is the pelvic inlet on the superior aspect. Anything above it is the greater pelvis, lined by S1 vertebra, S1 vertebra here, and the uh, iliac ala. And it's usually um, occupied by abdominal uh, viscera. Then the true pelvis, which is also called the lesser pelvis, is between the pelvic inlet and the pelvic outlet. And it's usually bounded by pelvic surfaces of the hip bones, sacrum and the cossex, and the true uh, it contains the true pelvic cavity and the deep parts of the perineum. And it's very significant uh, for obstetric and gynecological aspects. So again, that's a pelvic um, inlet. Okay. And that's a pelvic outlet on the inferior aspect. From the pubic arc to the sacrotuberous ligament to the cossex. While the pelvic inlet is the uh, uh, innominate bones of the sacrum. So... That's a pelvic inlet, the diameter of the pelvic inlet, and that's the pelvic outlet. So gender differences between pelvis, the male pelvis is larger and heavier, usually with prominent uh, tuberosities where muscles attach because males have larger muscles. It has thick articular ends and the pubic arc is V-shaped, while the female pelvis is wider and shallower, remember, uh, mainly adapted for pregnancy and childbirth. So the true pelvis will be wider, it will be shallow, and also the pubic arc is U-shaped. So the male pelvis is thick and heavy, the female one is thin and light. The greater pelvis is deep in the male and shallow in the female. Lesser pelvis again is narrow and deep in males, shallow and wide in females. Pelvic inlet is heart-shaped and narrow in male, while round and oval in female. Pelvic outlet is small in male and large in female. Pubic arc is uh, narrow or acute in male and wide in female. Obturator foramen round in males, oval in females, and the acetabulum is large in males. So again, you can see the male pelvis is more protected than the female, and the pubic arc is more of a V-shaped in male and U-shaped in female. The sacrum has five bones, and the transverse processes are fused to form lateral masses. The anterior sacral foramina are smaller than the posterior. 
the pelvic surface of the sacrum is concave and smooth anteriorly and irregular and convex posteriorly. So the sacrum is triangular in shape and the upper uh, surface, of course, um, articulates with L5 vertebra, but there's a thick uh, intervertebral disc in between them. And the superior border of sacrum forms a sacral promontory. So this is a sacral promontory. This is the anterior surface of the sacrum. This is the posterior surface. Posterior surface is irregular. Anterior surface is smooth and convex. The anterior foramina are um, smaller than the posterior foramina. This is the posterior sacral foramina. This is the anterior. Then the transverse processes are fused to form a lateral mass. And the um, uh, spines are fused to form a median sacral crest. That's a sacral promontory. So the, uh, and then this is the, the, the cossix here. So the cossix has four vertebra that are usually fused. The pelvic surface is convex and smooth. And the posterior wall of the cossix is absent and continues, uh, sac sacral hiatus continues downwards over the back of the cossix. The pelvic bone has sacroiliac joints, lumbosacral joints, pubic symphysis, and sacrococcygeal joints. The lumbosacral joint is uh, a transition between the mobile part, which is the lumbar, and the immobile portion, which is the sacrum. So it's the least stable part of the vertebral column. The sacroiliac joints are two, and uh, they are syndesmosis, which means they have a fibrous capsule at the joint. So it's a synovial syndesmosis and has two articular surfaces of the ilium, which articulate with the auricular surfaces of the sacrum. We have strong posterior ligaments, while the anterior sacroiliac ligaments are weak, and accessory ligaments also provide additional stability. So the anterior sacroiliac ligament is weak. It's usually, although stronger in females, broad and flat, lying on the pelvic side of the joint. While the posterior sacroiliac ligaments, there are different types. So we have the interosseous sacroiliac, which is deeper, so it's short and thick. While the uh, posterior sacroiliac, we have the long and the short types. So this is the iliolumbar ligament. This is the sacroiliac joint. You have the anterior sacroiliac ligament, which is weak. And posteriorly, we have interosseous, which is deeper. And then you have the posterior sacroiliac ligament. So these are stronger than the anterior. Then we have accessory ligaments like sacrotuberous and sacrospinous that stabilize the sacrum on the innominate to prevent forward tilting of the promontory. Usually these two ligaments convert greater and lesser sciatic notches to greater and lesser sciatic foramina to allow various neurovascular structure from the pelvis. So the true pelvis is a portion that is important for childbearing and the ischial spines are off. Uh, important or uh, uh, obstetrical importance and that's the, the distance between the two ischial spines is the shortest part of the pelvic diameter so it's a good uh, landmark in obstetrics so the sacrum forms the posterior part of the pelvis and it's curved to accommodate the rotating fetal head while the promontory is also good uh, landmark for clinical pelvimetry during vaginal examination so that's how vaginal examination is done and sacral promontory can be palpated. So we have different obstetric uh, diameters of the pelvis. So you, you can appreciate the anterior posterior diameter there, then the transverse diameter and the oblique diameters, and they vary in the pelvic inlet, the pelvic cavity, and the pelvic outlet. This superior portion is the pelvic inlet. The outlet is on the inferior aspect. Again, that's the anterior superior diameter, transverse diameter, and oblique. So anterior superior is 13, transverse between the ischial um, spines, interspinous diameter, then there is this diameter again which is transverse and the oblique diameter. So at anterior posterior diameters are taken at the ischial spine, and uh, sorry, at the pelvic inlet and the pelvic outlet. So that is superior part of the pubic symphysis and inferior part of the pubic symphysis. So the pelvic inlet from the sacral promontory to the superior part of the arc gives us the anatomic conjugate, while sacral promontory to inferior part of the pubic symphysis gives us the diagonal conjugate, while the center of the pubic bone to the sacral promontory gives us the obstetric conjugate. So all these are just um, uh, are important to determine whether the pelvis is adequate for the fetus to allow normal uh, vaginal delivery. So we have different types of pelvic shapes. We have the gynecoid pelvis and the android pelvis. The gynecoid pelvis 
um, is the one that's adequate for you know obstetrics and it's oval and rounded with ischial spines that are not prominent the pubic arc is white while the sacrum is well curved the android is the one seen in men it's deep ischial spines are prominent the pubic angle arc is narrow and the sacrum is straight that shows you the different types of of, of pelvis that's the gynecoid anthropoid android and platyloid with the differences tabulated there but you can appreciate the shape of the pelvic inlet is different look at the android and the gynecoid so this one is narrow and heart shaped this one is round or oval and looks wider and usually shallower thank you very much